Can you explain this whole oh, Trump thing right here? Well, what, this part? The, no, specifically. Where we currently are? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. All right, so, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> 2005, I want to say. Oh, Donald we're going Trump, back. Well, that's when it starts. So Donald Trump, uh, he's the apprentice guy, newly married to Melania. Yeah. Um, I believe he's in Aspen. He meets up with a woman named Stormy Daniels. Seen her porn strip. Porn star. Yeah, okay. I went and saw her strip I heard she made a, a lot of money off that. Yeah. In yeah. Dallas. Okay, yeah. how was and, it? And uh, she got on stage, and the guys all in the front row put on their MAGA hats. <laughs> I swear to God, it was amazing. <laughs> and uh, they were just throwing, making her dance while they were in their MAGA hats. It was fucking unbelievable. Hey, you know what? That's a win-win yeah. situation. The guys oh, yeah. in the front row. Right. We were wearing MAGA yeah, hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go okay. on. All right, so 2005, they have their tryst. Horse face. Uh, horse face, as he famously called Trump her. The only could call a girl he paid to yes. fuck a horse. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you paid me. Right. Yeah, so yeah. that happens, 2005, 2016, he's running for president. Multiple women come out and are trying to extort, basically extort money from Trump, being yeah. like, I'm either going to go to the National Enquirer, you got to pay me. Karen McDougal, she was a Playboy model, she also got paid off. There was like this whole thing with the National Enquirer about how they were burying some of these, whatever. This is all 2018 drama. Yeah. So what ends up happening is that Michael Cohen, the lead lawyer for Trump at that time, his personal attorney, agrees to pay her $130,000 to be quiet. Okay. Trump then uses the Trump organization to reimburse Michael Cohen for that legal payment. That payment was recorded for legal services, not as a payoff. Now, Smart. there are two investigations that went into this. One, in 2018, when this was initially looked at, was whether this was a federal campaign finance violation. Cohen eventually pleads guilty to this payment because the payment was done explicitly for the purposes of the Trump 2020 campaign. Mm. So it should have been reported to the FEC as a payment that was related to the 2020 campaign, not a personal expense. Michael Cohen pleads guilty here in the Southern District of New York to this charge. However, Trump is never charged with a campaign finance violation. That was the federal crime. Okay. Why? Uh, there's a variety of reasons. So number one, DOJ guidance says you're not allowed to indict a sitting president, but the facts of the case were you would have to, yes, you had Michael Cohen's evidence, but he could have made a convincing case that it had to do with a personal matter as in he didn't want to offend his wife as opposed to the campaign. So even though Cohen pled guilty to it, because he directly was the one who paid it, Trump himself, legal ambiguity was already kind of there. They didn't know if they were gonna win in court. Like a, like directly, you violated federal campaign violation. Because mm. he could make a credible case that it was a personal payment. What would the credible case be? Again, that he didn't want to embarrass his wife Melania, and that it had nothing to do uh, with the campaign. So he, so, so, uh, he could have made that, he was like, no, this had nothing to do with the campaign, this was like me to save face in my marriage. Like that's legally all you have to, I mean, mm. not a bad case, right? This is something that you could make. Hmm. So that they made me the case that this was personal. So that was the federal one. The state charge that Alvin Bragg, your DA, is apparently looking at it, bringing has nothing to do with federal campaign because he has nothing to do with campaign finance. He is looking at felony bookkeeping fraud. So felony bookkeeping fraud is a statute of limitations for two years. You can extend it up to five years if that person was out of state, as Trump was while he was at the White House. He has to prove that the bookkeeping fraud, that the payment to Michael Cohen was not only made um, intentionally with the purpose of a cover-up, but that that intentional cover-up was in the process uh, the while conducting another crime, as in the payment was to cover up a different crime. What so, would the other crime be? Well, that's the problem, which is that the, a lot of this hasn't come out because it's secret in the grand jury, but it's a very novel interpretation of the law. It's never actually been prosecuted in New York state law ever before. So that's number one. It's a legal theory of the case that has never been tried yet. We'll find out if he does get arrested and indicted, how that's gonna work. Two is that the statute of limitations thing is a little bit weird because as I said, the statute of limitations is two years if you're in the state, up to five years if you're out. So they have to make the case that he was out of enough time and they're still barely on the edge of that because he's been gone like back and forth as how that's gonna be. But to me, I just think this is the weakest case against Trump. Like legally, he faces far more legal jeopardy in the Georgia case that's going on right now, which is the Fulton County DA. Uh, just fine 2,000 votes case. or whatever. The, the fine 2,000 votes, exactly. The pressuring the state of Georgia's election procedures. He also, I mean, I don't think the Biden people can indict him now for the secret classified documents. Of course after not. They found classified documents yeah. in his house. Yeah. But, I mean, legally, that one's probably the most open and shut case. Yeah. Where they have him, like, dead to rights hmm. on obstruction of justice. So I think it's a huge mistake for them to try and I, indict him. I, I don't know if they're going to do it. We'll I see. don't think. I don't think they will. I don't think Biden and the Biden administration and the Democrats want to indict him. Why not? Because I think they want him to run because that's the only person they can beat. Maybe. 
My theory is the Republicans want him in prison. Uh -huh. They want him in jail. The Republican establishment wants him exactly. in prison. Exactly. The yeah, establishment, yeah, yeah, yeah. not the voters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The establishment. <laughs> yes. Because they're like, okay, if he's here, he's not going to fracture the Republican uh -huh. vote. DeSantis can go. DeSantis can probably beat right. Biden. Right. But I think Trump is so polarizing right now and so toxic that people will do an anti-Trump vote again. And I think that they can beat him. I think if DeSantis runs, they got to get rid of Biden and then run right. somebody else. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't actually know. I actually, because who's the only viable alternative? Kamala? She's, no. way, less, she's way less popular. Not even than, possible. It's no, but be the party else. will never ditch her. The party elites will never ditch Kamala. I think you they've already How? ditched her. You can't ditch her. Do you don't think? No, dude. The power of identity politics. She's the first black vice president. Like, never. They keep, they'll never be able to do it. Really? Yes. I think she's fucked up enough where they're like, yeah, yeah this girl's an idiot. So, Who's I mean, the listen, third option, you think? So. Yeah. Pete Buttigieg. But he's oh, even God. worse. Yeah. yeah. Look at, look at, have you flown yeah. recently? Yeah. <laughs> like, I thought that how's did, the East Palestine thing doing? Bro, like, I thought they did that shit to him on purpose. I thought it was like, <laughs> yo, don't run. No. This is how conspiracy I theory I, I am. It. It's like, there yeah. was a few crashes in a row. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I think Pete was getting ideas. He's like, I think yeah. he might run for president. Yeah. Like, yo. I think Ohio's going to run. Because, right, it was the trap. It was every flight shut down. Southwest all shut down for a week. 2021 was a nightmare for air travel. Then Southwest, Christmas. Then East Palestine. Mm. And then, oh, FAA. Don't forget that one. Total ground stop yep. for the entire. That was actually crazy. Yeah. yeah. That was the first national air stop since 9 11. Wow. Just shut down. Like, yeah. what? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. That's my little conspiracy uh, theory. You don't think Biden runs think again? Or you think if he does run again, you think he wins? If he's alive, he's going to run again. Whether he went, I don't know. I have no idea. It's one of those where. Well, like, here's the weird thing. Yeah. I think that if you asked people if their happiness has gone up or down since Trump, I think both Republicans and Democrats, if they could be honest, mm -hmm. not ask if you like Biden, if he's good, if he's doing a good job or anything, just your overall happiness, despite every possible calamity happening in the world, I think their happiness has gone up. There's global, awesome. imagine if Trump was in office during this bank crash. Just imagine the shit storm that would happen. Imagine when uh, the transportation shit went down. Oh. Imagine, but the, because Biden never has an opinion on anything, there's nothing to push back against. Right. This goes back to what we were saying earlier about like the cultural apathy. Mm -hmm. I think what happens is if you have a president that's completely detached, it's very easy to be detached yourself. Yes. I don't need to know anything. He doesn't know anything, right? Whereas, whereas Trump organized what was the most important story every single week. He's like, we're going to talk about Transformers right, this week. Right. We're going to talk about this this week. We're going to talk about that this week. Like, And the people that hated him rallied against it. The so that's people that good and him, bad. rallied it for it. The thing is, I can make a case either way. So oh, the, oh, 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 I'm yeah, not making ahead. the argument whether it's good or bad. Oh, okay. what, I, what I'm saying is that like, I think that there's this, this cultural malaise that we're existing in. Yes. I, think, I think some people like it. I think there was oh, an exhaustion. Sure. Of course. That's why people voted for Biden. And no, that's, no question. That's why I think if Biden's alive, and he could be right. Trump again. It's because it'll be another anti-Trump vote. I think if it's DeSantis, to his point about yeah. fraction of the party, if it's DeSantis, either way, the boat's not going to get that rocked, right. and this guy's more mentally coherent. I th yeah, there maybe. will be less, and there will be less anti-DeSantis vote. Maybe I, less. My thing is, I, I've, what I always look at is. One of the issues is two years out, like who the fuck knows? Yeah, like seriously, yeah, the economy yeah. could crash. The Ukraine war could be over. That's the true. economy could be booming. The yeah. Trump like, re-election. Here's a good case for Biden. If I was Biden, I would be doing everything I possibly could to bring Ukraine to an end. Inflation will go down. G gas prices will go down right before the election. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, just got a big win internationally. The economy's coming back. I passed the Inflation Reduction Act. These cra crazy Republicans didn't get what, what they wanted during abortion. No more stop the steal. That's a good case. Mm. I could make the other case, mm. which is he He's too beholden to the neocons, escalates the war in Ukraine. It's a fucking disaster. Gas is $5 a gallon. Okay, welcome back, President Trump. To right. your point. So it's like, it's, both of these are very within the realm of possibility. Trump had it. Yeah. If you ask somebody in February yeah. 2020 who's going to win the election, right. wasn't even a question Trump was going to get reelected. March 2020, way, COVID happens. He only happens. lost by 30,000 votes. We all forget that. Yeah. 30,000 votes across three states. Yeah. He only lost lot. Georgia by 10,000. Yeah. If enough, if the, if the same people who voted by mail in the Republican primary vote in 2020, he wins Georgia. The same thing in Maricopa County and also basically the same thing in either Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, or Michigan. Here's so, why I think, though, anti-votes are strong. The reason Dems won more states in the midterm Senate than people thought yes. is anti, the anti-abortion. They're anti-anti-abortion. Absolutely correct. The anti-abortion law passed. They overturned Roe versus Wade, yeah. which for me is just crazy. Crazy to overturn a Supreme Court ruling. I don't care what it is, but well, what about Dred Scott? 
Which one is that one? Uh, the one where they declared <laughs> that black men are not citizens of the United States. Starting like yeah. 1910. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The one that overturned yeah. the Fugitive Slave Act, and uh, or sorry, the uh, Kansas Starting Nebraska. Right. Sometimes they get it right. Started yeah. 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 What uh, about uh, Korematsu, which, which upheld the Japanese internment camps? I think it was like 1942. Yeah, yeah. but uh, <laughs> that one's still on the books, technically, actually. But I, yeah, I think yeah. the anti-vote will still be strong if Trump wins. Just I be, agree with you because it's we, they Democrats have proven the only way they vote is they hate the guy that's well, running. Look, that's or not they're just, voting against something or someone. In modern American history, the great landslides have almost always been negative, not positive. The only positive landslide in modern American history is 1964 election LBJ to fulfill John F. Kennedy's legacy. Yeah. So the Nixon landslide of 68 mm. was a pushback against the chaos of the Vietnam War. The FDR landslide is let's get us the fuck out of the Great Depression. Yeah. The uh, 1980 landslide of Ronald Reagan and 84 is to save us from the nightmare of Jimmy Carter. Even Jimmy Carter's election, which was relatively narrow, was also let's just move on from Nixon. So yeah. it's almost always been powerful in modern American history to be the anti-vote, like the move on party. Part of the reason, again, why I think Biden was so successful. Uh, but Trump also, like I said, that Ukraine case I laid out, that's very possible. Like mm. we could be in a full-blown conflict in Europe and Trump is like, I will get us out. I mean, that's literally what Eisenhower ran on against Truman. He said, I will go to Korea and I'm gonna get us the fuck out of the Korean 